It's always heartwarming to see a couple end up together at the end of a movie, isn't it? Whatever hardships gone through, hurdles climbed, lessons learned, it's always great to see two people who really deserve each other fall in love. But doesn't it suck when one of them is actually kind of a jerk and doesn't deserve their partner? Now you may be thinking this doesn't really happen too often. Even when a girl is with a jerk for the majority of a movie, she'll always eventually see him for the jackass that he is, like in Wedding Crashers, The Wedding Singer, and Titanic. But somewhere along the lines came a new type of jerk. Only this one actually ends up with the girl most of the time, and those that come across as the heroes of these films have spawned an entire generation of guys who feel they are entitled to girls simply because they act polite. Of course, I'm talking about the nice guy. He'll play it off nice and sweet and complain that girls are only into jerks, but he doesn't really treat them any better. He'll tell her to stop using so much makeup because she looks better without it, acting like he just wants to see the real girl, but really he believes she's thinking of him when putting it on, instead of doing it simply because she likes to. The nice guy would tell a girl to smile because he just wants to see her having a nice day, without realizing that she's a human who is actually allowed to experience other emotions as well. He'll do everything he can to be thoughtful, kind, and romantic, and then be downright offended when general social etiquette isn't enough to win somebody's heart. The truth is, nice guys are just as big of jerks as those that complain about. They either just don't realize it, or are better at hiding it. Here are three movie characters who help create the modern day nice guy. And can't hardly wait, four years worth of teenage longing, sexual aggravation, and resentment all culminate into one post-graduation party. And while storylines include Nerd William plotting revenge against popular jock Mike, and wannabe cool guy Kenny desperate to get laid despite all appearances indicating he's trying hard not to, the main storyline to follow is that of Preston, your standard not a loser but not spectacular in any way average dude, trying to convince the popular Amanda, a girl he has never even spoken to, that he's the one for her. Of course you're rooting for Preston, right? He's the relatable guy representing most of you sitting there watching the movie. Well, let's hope not. See, psychologists say a crush typically lasts about four months, and anything longer than that is supposed to be love. But can it possibly be considered love when it's four years later and one side doesn't even know the other exists? Fortunately for Preston, he has a secret weapon. A letter in which he spills his heart to her that she finds touching just hours after finally dumping her jerk boyfriend. Unfortunately though, his writing is clearly better than his speaking ability as when they finally do meet face to face, she finds him creepy and publicly rejects him. It's not until later that she realizes he is the one who wrote the letter, and the next morning she finds him just before he leaves town. They kiss, and if the credits are to be believed, they are still together to this day no matter how long it's been since you actually saw a VCR. And that's how the movie says it's supposed to work. One morning she's never heard of the guy, and one love letter and 48 hours later they're writing to each other every day. Because it was the 90s, and texting too much can cause bankruptcy, and they hadn't yet developed the technology to easily allow him to send her pictures of his junk. So for all you perfectly average guys who fell in love with the hottest girl in school when you saw her walking down the hall last week, don't worry, you just have to be patient. Like, really, really patient. Probably for a few years. But just wait for that right moment and pounce with a grandiose showing of love and she'll be all yours. Because after all, the only thing girls look for is that one big romantic gesture. She has no idea what kind of personality he has, if any. So why should anybody bother to be interesting? Maybe all these nice guys spend too much time trying to be romantic and not enough time making sure he's actually a fun person to be around. Maybe that's really why girls like all those guys who hate. Because going to a party actually is more enjoyable to most people than pizza and the latest season of The Big Bang Theory. Dizzy is a loser, a nobody. Just a blip on the high school radar. So he gets himself expelled so he can start fresh at a new high school in order to become popular. It goes well at first. He beats up the school bully, turns down the popular girl at a party, and rallies the football team to a state championship. Of course he gets outed as a liar at the end, but a quick apology nets him the head cheerleader. He's supposed to be the underdog that every unnoticed guy can root for. But let's hope not, because deceiving everybody you come across isn't exactly cool behavior. What the new guy is really saying is don't bother loving yourself if nobody else does, popularity is all that matters. But it was hard for Dizzy to love himself after being mocked and abused by his classmates, sometimes physically so. So for the rest of the movie, every action he takes and lies he tells is justified in his mind because he's been the victim for so long. He makes a public apology at the end, only after being outed by a former classmate of course, admitting he lied to everybody because he was tired of being a nobody. And he pleads to the crowd that he can't be the only one who thinks about what others think more than what they think about themselves, which naturally leads to a chorus of boos, because while that is a tendency of most people, especially high school students, nobody is going to go as far as Dizzy did. 
The movie shows you have to play yourself off as the victim because everybody else is just part of a mindless horde who are in the palm of his hand one second and turn on him the next as soon as chance of broke dick begin. And this shows for everybody narrating their own movie in their heads all day that they have to be a victim because everybody else is clearly too dumb to think for themselves. And it's a major stroke of luck that Danielle also alienated her old friends in order to gain popularity, or she might not have been as forgiven to the guy she was falling for who lied his way into her life. And she would have kept it up too if it wasn't for Dizzy understanding and helping her realize her mistakes, because deep down inside, every popular girl is just a nerd in disguise, waiting for that one truly sweet and caring guy to come along to let her know that she was perfect just the way she was. That she doesn't need all the makeup and the brand name clothing her feeble little mind has been tricked into buying by the advertising companies. Holden McNeil meets fellow comic book artist Alyssa Jones and falls for her hard, but gets hit even harder when he finds out she's a lesbian. They go on as friends for a while, but that isn't enough as he soon confesses his love for her knowing full well he's not exactly her type but she decides to go out with him anyway. It's not too long into the relationship when another roadblock gets in the way, Alyssa's sexual history. Holden gets upset when he finds out that not only does she have a highly unrestrained sexual history, but he is not even the first guy she's ever been with. Wisely, she decides to stop dating him over this, even after he does apologize by trying to get her into a threesome. Oh, the friend zone. That woeful place where nice guys are whisked off to have their souls stepped on, where they can only hang out with a girl instead of having sex with her. And Holden is trapped in the friend zone by a genuinely awesome girl who has explicitly stated she has no interest in him. But he puts all the pressure on her by saying he loves her, and he wears her down until she just can't take it anymore and gives in to his demand for love. Now leaving somebody alone is shown to be admirable as Holden keeps working towards his goal until he gets what he wants. But the goal here isn't something to cheer for, like running the fastest marathon or the most times kicking yourself in the face. The goal here is another human being who is plenty capable of deciding for themselves what is right for them. Even worse is when he gets upset over her past sexual history. It starts off early when he's clearly embarrassed to be around Banky and Alyssa as they show off their sexual injuries in a Jaws inspired scene that's actually better than any of the Jaws sequels. I got that beat. I got that beat. Junior year, I'm going down on Cynthia Slater in her dorm room after we went club hopping. I'm totally drunk. And in the middle of it, she digs her heel into my back. Right there. That's permanent. All right, all right. See this? That's the farthest I can move my neck to the right. But he completely loses his cool later on when Banky spills the beans on her numerous experiments with guys before him because god forbid she be tainted by the touch of another man. Because nice guys just want their girl to be special and when it turns out in his mind that she's not anymore then somehow she's deceived him and it's his right to be offended. It's like going to Burger King and getting pissed off when you notice that the bacon cheeseburger you just paid 80 cents for doesn't look like the picture that some photographer was paid more in one hour to painstakingly make look delicious than the entire staff makes in one day. You don't get to get upset when something doesn't match the obviously impossible image of it that you have in your head. Now of course Holden doesn't end up with the girl like Preston or Dizzy, but the behavior is still there showing how somebody can get upset over something that they have no right to be. So it's time to stop being nice. Well, don't stop being nice, we're trying to live in a society after all. But it's time to stop looking up to the characters who get the girl based on general politeness. Because the world doesn't work that way and you aren't owed anything by anyone based on manners and romantic gestures alone.